Try to gather all your thoughts, all your awareness right here at the breath. Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths to gain a sense of the feeling of the breath in the body. And notice where you sense it. Where do you feel it? In your chest, in your head, in the abdomen. We're talking less about the air coming in and out of the lungs and more the feeling of motion, the feeling of energy that brings the air in and lets it go out. When you sense that movement of energy clearly, let your awareness settle right there, wherever it may be clearest. And allow it to be comfortable. Try not to put too much pressure on it. You do want to stay here, so it's going to require a little bit of pressure in, in your focus. But you don't want to be so much that it gets in the way of the flow of the blood in your body or makes you tense. Allow the breath some freedom. The mind simply keeps track of what's happening. And you find that your thoughts are wandering off, just bring them right back. The more quickly you can catch yourself getting distracted, the more quickly you can bring it back, the better. Sometimes people ask, how can you measure progress in your meditation? And that's one of the ways. Learning how to catch the mind as quickly as possible. Ideally, you can catch it before it goes. There may be a little bit of boredom or a little bit of dis-ease in the present moment, and the mind is beginning to look for someplace else to go. You want to catch it at that stage, and then immediately breathe in a way that is more interesting, because a lot of times the mind wanders away because of boredom. It doesn't see anything really interesting here with the breath, and that's largely because you're not sensitive enough yet. The more sensitive you become to the process of breathing, the more you begin to notice there are a lot of things going on here. The energy flow in the body goes in lots of different directions, and sometimes it works together in harmony, and sometimes it works at cross-purposes. When it's at cross-purposes, it's unpleasant to be in the present moment, and the mind immediately looks for someplace else to go. But again, if you can see that that's the problem, then just hold that thought in the mind. Have all the parts of the body breathe in together, breathe out together. I guess this flow of energy is not just around the torso or in the head. It affects all the nervous system, all the way out to the tips of your fingers, all the way out to the tips of your toes. You're basically developing three qualities of mind here. First, there's mindfulness, which means keeping something in mind. In other words, right now you're keeping in mind your original intention to stay with the breath. And you want to have access to the various things you've learned in the past about staying with the breath. What kind of breathing the body likes when you're tired, what kind it likes when you're nervous. What kind of breathing gives you energy, what kind of breathing saps your energy. What kind of breathing helps the mind to settle down with a very strong sense of being solidly here? These are things you want to observe. That's what the second quality is all about, is alertness. Watching what's actually going on, watching what you're doing, and seeing what kind of results you're getting. The mindfulness and alertness have to work together. The more alert you are in the present moment, the more you'll be able to remember in terms of your repertoire of approaches, your repertoire of tools. So you can learn how to do this more and more skillfully. That relates to the third quality, which is ardency, which is the effort you put into doing this as skillfully as you can. 
heart of ardency involves desire, the desire to do this well. But of course the desire on its own is not going to help you. You need to have the quality of observation. You need wisdom to learn how to focus your desire. And here you're focusing it on the causes. We're here not because we want the breath. We're here because we want peace of mind. But it turns out that peace of mind is helped a great deal by learning how to breathe with awareness, breathe with alertness, breathe with all your sensitivity. In one of the Buddha's analysis of suffering, or the causes of suffering, he starts with ignorance. And ignorance is not just a general delusion, it's more precise. It's ignorance means you're not looking at things in terms of the Four Noble Truths. In other words, you don't understand what stress is, you don't understand what its cause is. You don't understand the possibility of putting an end to the stress by putting an end to the cause. You don't know the strategies, the path that the Buddha taught for doing that. Or if you do know those things, you're not using them. You're not really looking at things in those terms. For example, with the breath, you could say, part of the reason you're not staying here is because there's a sense of dis-ease in the breath. Or you're not happy with the breath. You want something else as a topic. And so you look into the potential cause. And the potential cause might be that you have a craving for something else. You want some entertainment right now, or you want some diversion, or you just want to doze off. Well, that desire is getting in the way. So you have to learn how to put an end to that desire by working on the path. This means reminding yourself of why you're here, what you really want. You want something more than just a, a pleasant moment or two. You'd like to really understand why there is suffering in your life and what you can do to put an end to it. And so if thoughts of sensual pleasure come up, you learn how to put them aside. If thoughts of ill will for this person or that person come up, you put those aside as well. You pr replace them with thoughts of goodwill. And so on down the line, through all the factors of the path. So when you bring this kind of knowledge that you really do want to put an end to suffering, you apply that to your breathing. On the very beginning level, it's simply a matter of learning how to breathe comfortably. Now, as you get deeper into the practice, you start noticing how the mind is acting around the breath. It's like when you're a child and we're first learning how to throw a ball. You had the ball in your hand and you just saw where you wanted it to go and you're focused totally on where you wanted it to go and you weren't paying attention very much to how you were throwing. And you realize that that wasn't working. So you have to become more and more sensitive to what's my hand doing right now? What's your arm doing right now? How about your shoulder? How do you get more and more sensitive to the process of throwing and you got better and better at it? Same way with the meditation. We start by noticing the breath. In the beginning, it's just that's hard enough, just watching the breath. But as you're with the breath, you begin to notice there are feelings around the breath. There are all the different decisions you're making around the breath, what your mind is doing around the breath. And the more you get sensitive to that, the easier it is to stay settled. So all of this comes under ardency, the desire to do it well. And you notice these three qualities relate to the three different time frames. Mindfulness helps you tap into your memories of the past, what memories are relevant to the practice right now. The primary one, of course, is that you want to remember to stay with the breath. You made that intention at the beginning of the hour, and you want to remember that. You don't want to forget. And if something comes up that's not quite right, then you want to re remember what you've done in the past that did work, so you can apply it. Alertness focuses on the present, what's actually going on right now. What are you doing? What are the results of what you're doing? And then ardency relates both to the present and into the future. You 
really want to be serious about staying focused here because you have a goal in mind, that desire to really understand suffering and learn how to get beyond it. That's what keeps you here, keeps you going to the next moment and then the next. So even though our primary focus is on the present moment, we are related to the, all three time frames through these three qualities of mindfulness, alertness, and ardency. This is how the meditation makes sense, because sometimes a question comes up in the mind, why are you doing this, focusing on the breath? What can you learn when you focus on the breath? And then you remember you can learn a lot. After all, what was the Buddha focused on in the night of his awakening? He started out with a breath. What's the difference between his breath and your breath? The breath itself is not different in any way. It was a quality of mind that he brought to it. That's what was different. And you remember that you can develop those qualities too, as he said. It was, wasn't that he was some special god or something who had come down. He developed qualities of ardency, alertness, resolution, heedfulness, things that we can all develop. And what did he gain? He gained true happiness. Would you like some of that? Yes. So even though you're not finding it right here, right now, the more carefully you pay attention here, right now, there will come a time in the future when right here, right now will open up. So even though we're trying to block out distractions that would pull us to the past and the future, we do want to tap into the parts of the past and the future that are useful so we can settle down and find a sense of well-being, a sense of purpose and being here, an understanding of what we want to look for. But when I look for what the mind is doing under ignorance and try to bring more knowledge to it, it begins with a breath. As Buddha said, one of the causes of stress and suffering is that you breathe in an ignorant way. It may sound strange, but it's one of the factors that leads to stress and suffering. Because if you're not paying attention to the breath, you're not fully in the present moment. And if you're not fully in the present moment, there are a lot of other things that are going to go on in the mind that you're not seeing either. So take this opportunity to really look carefully at the breath, and develop these qualities of mindfulness, alertness, ardency as you work with the breath. And you find that there really is a lot going on here that's a lo of a lot in of interest. It's really important what we're doing right here, right now. You're learning about your own mind. learning how it's causing suffering, and you're learning how you can train it so that it doesn't cause suffering anymore. And what could be more interesting than that? <laughs>